hari ini kita berbincang sekali lagi dalam sudut pandang dan malam ini saya gembira kerana saya boleh kembali kepada satu topik yang begitu dekat dengan hati dan asal wujudnya saya iaitu sawah dan padi dan uh, oleh itu saya ingin minta izin berbicara bahasa Inggeris kerana saya ada tamu antarabangsa hari ini campur juga dengan tempatan uh, pertamanya di hujung sana Datuk Dr. Hashim Abdul Wahab uh, pengurusi agreement consultant Senja Berhad bekas naik presiden persatuan pecinta alam Malaysia dan juga orang penting kerajaan dalam banyak agensi sebelum bersara dahulu terutamanya yang berkaitan dengan uh, pertanian begitu juga orang yang mencintai flora fauna dan juga biodiversity beliau kerap uh, dalam hobi hobi beliau termasuklah scuba menyelam scuba dan sebagainya itu kita akan kembali ke situ dan uh, tamu yang cukup saya raikan malam ini adalah Dr KL Hyong Uh, fellow Academy Science Malaysia Fellow Tok Wal Academy of Science uh, Dan juga Saintis kan Ataupun Senior Saintis International Rice Research Institute Philippines uh, I guess when Before I start today I would like to go back to basics And, and look at Once upon a time Before You know Commercialization came in Our forefathers really know How to tell Mm-hmm. the weather yeah. patterns and looking at what's flying around in terms of insects and what's available around and they know the harmony and interaction between biodiversity and the cycle of life but going forward through industrial uh, process and everything else maybe a gap has appeared and now with science we get back a lot of knowledge that we might have not make linkages mm-hmm. before And one of it, if we focus on the rice ecosystem, mm-hmm. is that we need mm-hmm. biodiversity mm-hmm. to make rice sustainable, not only for Perlis Kedah, the rice bowl of Malaysia, but also for the whole of Asia, maybe yeah. the bottom billion of the world, where food security is very, very paramount, because it's not just food security, it's also income for majority mm-hmm. of families. Yeah. So if we go there, Mm-hmm. and uh, we look at new challenges how do we make farmers the mm-hmm. frontier persons fronting all this to really look at biodiversity mm-hmm. because maybe for years and decades yeah. subsidies or, or commercialization mm-hmm. process saw the use mm-hmm. of insecticide and pesticide as a mass without that then yeah. there'll be pests and with pests productivity will go down and now suddenly we're going to reverse and tell them no you must allow some other plants rather than rice uh, a paddy to grow mm-hmm. and you must allow mm-hmm. insects to be around your paddy field then it will help you to get more yeah. so, so doctor in the as the develop as they develop pesticides what happens is that pesticide became a convenient uh, mechanism upon minium so called medicine and have been replacing a lot of the traditional knowledge that farm, farmers used to have which they they used to control their pests and biodiversity is basically encouraging more predators and the other kinds of insects sometimes we call them the good guys in, in the in the system like spiders uh, bee like creatures and so on so one of the objective of our project is to try and in return the biodiversity by getting farmers involved in this process after all uh, biodiversity may be a science that we discuss in scientific forum mm-hmm. but without the farmers who is who is the custodian of the environment as the participant we are not going to get anywhere we just have a discussion and no nobody yes. will uh, will gain from that so what we trying to do here is to r- provide new new knowledge associated knowledge okay. back to farmers to fill that gap that to illustrate the importance of biodiversity unfortunately a lot of these biodiversity animals that live in the rice are microscopic mm. and they cannot see them okay uh, one of them is a parasite we call him a parasite and it's some small creature that lays an egg in the egg of the pest okay. uh, that we call them parasitization mm-hmm. and parasitization is a complex uh, phenomena entomologists understand that but it's extremely difficult to communicate that to farmers uh, when the things are microscopic and, uh, and a phenomenon they're not familiar mm-hmm. with 
So one of the things that we're trying to do is to associate that with something they know. Okay. And uh, what we associate them is bees. Okay. Everybody know what a bee is. Mm -hmm. And a bee is a good guy. Yes. He's a pollinator and he's producing mm -hmm. honey. And these parasites are closely related to bees. So one of our communication strategy is to say, if you have bees in your, in your field, they have relatives. Okay. You cannot see their relatives, but you see the bees. Mm -hmm. And if bees are present in your field in plenty f numbers, your fields are safe because okay. the relatives are alive. Okay. And to encourage more bees and relatives, one thing to do is to provide flowers. Okay. Because flowers bring in nectar. Yes. And yellow flowers is especially attractive mm -hmm. to bees and relatives. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of communication we're trying to, uh, I wouldn't say re-educate, but actually to motivate okay. farmers that good thing the flowers and other biodiversity elements have benefits. Tato, I guess uh, if I ask you to wear the hat of National Nature Society, for example, and uh, biodiversity is not just for farmers, actually it's for everybody. If we value and put that as the utmost importance, then we can help solve a lot of the quality of life issues because we'll be going back to nature. However, there's a lot of uh, stakeholders here. There's also uh, land developers that want to see more land to be developed versus agricultural land. And if the farmers work in an island of, of paddy fields grouped together, but around that are all industrialized areas, so that's not going to help either. So how do we go back, not just to the farmers, but have this macro thinking in, in the country, or many countries, for example, that this should be first among other things, this should be first. Then it should be second, the yield and what kind of pesticide. After you have put this as an emphasis, does it go to policy first? Does it go back to social awareness, civil society making their work? Because a lot of petty farmers now, the next generation are working in greater KL area, for example, they will go back and they can bring this new message across back by scientific proof and research findings, mm -hmm. for example. So how do we start? Where do we start? And how fast can we do this? We have to go after this short break and we'll discuss that. Sakan di postme.com.my dan nikmati cara pembayaran yang mudah dengan kad kredit, debit ataupun tunai. Dijamin oleh Digiser, penghantaran oleh Post Laju. Postme.com.my produk inovasi daripada Post Malaysia. Hey, Wong, hmm. orang kurang bayar. Oh, itu baru punya orang lah. Ha. Saya punya unit, Ma. Macam mana dia kerja okey? Dia kerja okey. Dia punya kekurangan lah. Bukan masalah untuk dia buat kerja. Man. Tapi perlu ke kita bagi lain-lain istimewa kat dia? Saya rasa dia bukan nak minta simpati oleh kita. Malah saya rasa kalau kita layan dia macam biasa, dia lebih suka. Sebab sebelum ni pun saya tak pernah dengar orang lain lagi cakap buruk pasal dia. Hmm. Saya pun tak pernah dengar dia mengeluh. Malah saya rasa dia gunakan kekurangan dia tu sebagai satu cabaran. Apa yang kita bagi pun semuanya selesai kan? Tak ada masalah apa yang dia buat kan? Hmm. Hmm, cakap pasal masalah, sekarang sudah lewat. Jom kita sambung kerja. Okey, jumpa lagi ya. Sudah makan lah? Sudah minum? Okey, tak apa-apa ya. Setiap Jumaat, secara langsung, You Wartawan. You Wartawan, anda juga wartawan. Jangan hanya kita melihat dan kelompok kita. Apa dia kena orang muda di luar? BN hanya minta mereka membalas budi dengan sedikit gertakan. Kumpin itu harus bermula daripada hari ini. Di sini yang mereka bentuk satu karakter politik yang Betul. sendiri. BN perlu cari formula untuk menawar semula hati rakyat. Tantakan pandangan ataupun komen anda dari pengetahuan yang kami sediakan. Secara langsung, You Wartawan. Setiap Jumaat, 10 malam di Astro Awan. Berita segenap dimensi. Ya, 
would like to continue. I've got my books yeah. yeah. And add to my question before mm. the break to that talk, Dr. Ashu, because we had a great discussion in the commercial break time that uh, maybe if you can share with us instances whereby by maintaining flora and fauna, not just for the rice ecosystem or paddy fields uh, areas, but also for other matters. It brings back real services and products, right, if right, we can right. put it that way, to the community and to the nation. Right. right. Yeah. So, uh, as uh, we've been saying, yeah, what, what is needed is actually um, a more balanced of uh, development, taking care of our environment and at the same time looking at uh, the materialistic sort of development. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we looked at the um, rice ecosystem right now. I remember having lived in a rice community. Yes. And then must say too, uh, we have got the ikan spot in our right. uh, ecosystem, this part of the biodiversity. Mm -hmm. And then we have got the uh, kangkong, mm -hmm. where we can go down, yes. down there and pick it up mm -hmm. and um, just cook it. So and then the, the, the fish sort of biodiversity is pretty rich in addition to the um, vegetation. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a sort of rich biodiversity that, that, that we have. But that is talking just about uh, the rice ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And then we go into the rainforest ecosystem, mm -hmm. and then we have much more biodiversity that we have not exploited. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to in terms of balanced living, now, although um, we need for this land to be uh, cleared up for oil palm, for um, rubber, for cocoa and other things, but at the same time, we must be living enough of the rainforest uh, ecosystem. That's a global fight. Kyoto, yeah. Cancun recently, right. you know, people who have lost their forests or nearly finished with their forests, if you can put it that way, are telling the kind of people in the countries that still have that you cannot do anymore. You must stop touching this rainforest because they're not just your heritage, they're heritage for the world because of carbon sink and all that. But in the other uh, hand, on the other hand, these people are saying that, yes, but you had your time. You burn your forest so that you can fuel your industrial revolution. And now you're telling us not to do the same. So how about our advancement and development? I guess that's a macro issue that uh, specific research like this mm -hmm. can prove that even if you maintain biodiversity, mm -hmm. you will be contributing towards development because you will have a sustainable rice ecosystem, for example, doctor. That's, uh, this is a new principle, in economic principle that is now developing and is getting a lot of uh, uh, pre uh, uh, mileage out of this. And that is something called payment for environmental service. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the world now is beginning to recognize that there are other services that are unseen and, and uh, people take for granted, okay. like air and water, fresh water, yeah. people take for granted. And the, you only value it when there's shortage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cannot afford to wait for shortage to yes. be valued. And in fact, if you put all the ecosystem services, which is unseen and unpaid for together and value it, you'll find that it's three times the world uh, gro global national product. Mm -hmm. So actually there's a lot of services yes. which we, we take for granted. Mm -hmm. So now the world is debating how do we pay farmers for example mm -hmm. or custodians of environment services they provide back to the world so i i think in the nagoya protocol and mm -hmm. also in cancun yes. these issues were discussed uh, you are right that the developed countries say that uh, are pressuring the developing yes. countries not to cut their forests mm -hmm. but i think it is also right for the developing countries to say yeah compensate us pay us mm -hmm. because you, 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 we, they should be buying those services yes. back from us. And I think that is a good balance mm -hmm. that uh, services unseen should be paid for. Okay. Uh, this payment for environmental services is now a big concept in FAO. Okay. There are ways to try and find out how do we develop systems or mechanisms to pay farmers. Sometimes it's so easy for people who are saying just that mm -hmm. to be labeled as anti-development, anti-free market. Because mm -hmm. you're saying that I should not be using pesticides mm -hmm. and I'm advocating less use of pesticides or no use of pesticides at all. So, But you have researched in, in this thick PowerPoint presentation that I've read 
that even if you use insecticide and pesticide, mm -hmm. it's not increasing productivity because mm -hmm. there will be insects and pests that will be resistant to it yeah. and it's not working effectively because you're spraying on top and it's not destroying the the eggs yeah. of, of, of the plant hoppers for example mm -hmm. so using the micro example of the plant hoppers mm -hmm. and you know phenomenon that have happened in China and other mm -hmm. countries where they have large swarm of pests coming it's because even though they are using mm -hmm. insecticide and pesticides Doctor. That, that is actually the, we call those kind of pests uh, in ecology R, R pests, okay. which means this kind of pests uh, develops when their natural mechanisms fail and they, they swarm in large numbers okay. uh, into cities and, and destroy large areas of land. Mm -hmm. For example, last year, uh, 2009, Thailand lost 16% of their production from this, from this insect and the spread went out to the entire central Th Thailand. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why they had this problem was pesticide use. The farmers were using pesticides that were very toxic to bees, mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't know it. There was, their only advice was from the pesticide shop, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore they were asked to increase their use. Uh, because of this, what, what we have is problems like that and that when when a country rice production gets that kind of problem is a sign of unsustainable practices yes. being practiced mm -hmm. uh, you, you have it in China in Thailand in Vietnam parts of the Muda also yes. and wherever we go when we uh, when we have outbreaks like this we we interview farmers mm -hmm. and almost every time we will ask the farmers how many times did you spray eight times that kind of things are happening so almost we f we had a piece of research that showed that if farmers had sprayed very early in their season yes. they would have 10 times more vulnerable mm -hmm. to a plant hopper attack than the farmers who did nothing so farmers are encouraged motivated by industry mainly to apply insecticides unnecessarily. Yeah. And that is now causing those... That's not even talking about the impact to the person themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to go for the second commercial break, but once we are back, Tato, how do we change this? Because it's already ingrained in a lot of people's mind that you have large areas of paddy field. There's, there are a lot of pests and animals or insects that can ruin the harvest, and you will use uh, pesticide or insecticide and there were even subsidies for all these pesticide and insecticide so to change this it needs a macro perspective and it needs uh, micro execution for example how do we balance that taking Malaysia for example as for instance that we'll discuss after this short break Sakan di postme.com.my dan nikmati cara pembayaran yang mudah dengan kad kredit, debit ataupun tunai. Dijamin oleh Digiser, penghantaran oleh Post Laju. Postme.com.my produk inovasi daripada Post Malaysia. Eh, wong, hmm. orang kurang bayar. Oh, itu baru ni orang lah. Ha. Saya punya unit, mah. Macam mana dia kerja okey? Dia kerja okey. Dia punya kekurangan, ah, bukan masalah untuk dia buat kerja. Man. Tapi perlukah kita bagi lain-lain istimewa kat dia? Saya rasa dia bukan nak minta simpati dengan kita. Malah saya rasa kalau kita layan dia macam biasa, dia lebih suka. Sebab sebelum ni pun saya tak pernah dengar orang lain lagi cakap buruk pasal dia. Hmm. Saya pun tak pernah dengar dia mengeluh. Malah saya rasa dia gunakan kekurangan itu sebagai satu cabaran. Apa yang kita bagi pun semuanya selesai kan? Tak ada masalah apa yang dia buat kan? Hmm. Hmm, cakap pasal masalah, sekarang sudah lewat. Jom kita sambung kerja. Okey, jumpa lagi ya. Sudah makan lah? Sudah minum? Okey, tak makan. Okay. 
Setiap Isnin hingga Sabtu, Gala TV membawakan anda secara langsung 4.30 petang, 10.30 malam bersama Shazwan Zakaria, Umaira Uyot, Azman Yusof. Gala TV, buletin hiburan tempatan dan antarabangsa. Memaparkan perkembangan muzik, filem, teater, fashion dan mubual eksklusif. Gala TV, Isnin hingga Sabtu, 4.30 petang, 10.30 malam di Astro Awani. Berita segenap dimensi. like to go straight to that here pesticides can we live without them in, in, in the rice ecosystem for example i feel we can you know uh, we have got to change our ways of uh, growing rice okay you know if during the green revolution where we have uh, basically been uh, encouraging people to be using lots of fertilizers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a lot of uh, pesticides mm-hmm. but right now uh, the situation is so critical It's definitely hurting. The Very ecosystem. critical in terms of our mm. environment. Okay. We, we we need to change. Yes. And then uh, they, they, uh, to me, it's just a question of uh, for us, if we are focused for change, mm-hmm. for better, for the sake of our globe, we can do it. And we have the ways because right. senior scientists right. from International Re- Rice Research Institute, for example, ecological engineering. You know. Yeah. Ecologi- ecological engineering is a set of principles okay. whereby the landscape of any cultural practice or uh, cultural land is redesigned. We say redesigned consciously to provide habitats, okay. uh, mostly plants, for natural for predators and parasitoids mm-hmm. to for food as mm-hmm. well as shelter. Okay. And that is uh, what we're trying to do in rice ecosystem. Uh, provide resources, we call it resources, in terms of nectar uh, to natural enemies and predators. Of the, let's say uh, bees yeah. for uh, bees, against uh, plant flowers, yeah. flowers. The f- the basic elements of uh, biodiversity will be plants okay. because plants provide the basic elements, yes. the fund- foundation. Mm-hmm. So we we encourage people, farmers, to plant flowers or other plants that will provide the biodiversity needed for the other animals to live on. So we'll go for eco-agriculture? I, yes, that's the word the being used, eco-agriculture. So maybe people say, okay, plant hoppers, I can have bees, mm-hmm. kill the larvae or the eggs, yeah. but for bigger rodents like, you know, yeah. rats. The rodents element is, rodents generally don't live in the rice field, they mm-hmm. live so around the rice field, okay. and and uh, the strategy to rodent control is to manage their breeding sites. Okay. And a lot of them don't breed in the rice field; they breed mm-hmm. outside the rice field. So, in areas where there are a lot of rodents, is usually because they are land or, or habitats they breed in. So, the strategy of ecological engineering is to alter those land, mm-hmm. find some other crops to grow on those lands so okay. that to make the land more productive and no longer a habitat mm-hmm. for uh, for rats so there's no shrubs or similarly you know, with yeah. birds it's also a a, a, man, a management system mm-hmm. uh, you find ways to look at roosting sites okay. and remove those roosting sites mm-hmm. from from the from the vicinity. So it's a total approach. Yeah, it's a total I, approach. I remember it. Uh, Using ecology yes. as a basic principle. When I was younger, maybe about 10 years ago, not far from where I studied, a group of Taiwan Taiwanese farmers, mm-hmm. they came over because they're very surprised to know that there's an area in Malaysia mm-hmm. where the yield per hectare of rice, of paddy, uh, is higher than them. Mm-hmm. And they're like, So they came over at that particular place. There's not a single blade of grass. Yeah. It's everything is, if I can use this word, speak and span in that sense, it's, it's very clean, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I read your research findings and, and what you're saying here, that's not the way to go because it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we need a total approach mm-hmm. that helps have uh, help the ecosystem to have more flora and fauna, for example. Mm-hmm. But we need to do that holistically. That all. We cannot just, some parts of Pradley mm-hmm. Sokada will do it and then the neighbors will say, why are you letting all this coming over to my side? It's, you know. In fact, on this, as well, 
uh, we, we can start with our home uh, in the home garden itself you can enrich your bio, bio, bio mm-hmm. biodiversity mm-hmm. I mean in the sense of um, having your own vegetable plot okay. your own herbs where I mean, is I, our I it, yeah. no I, I'm doing it in but, fact, uh, but if we talk about rice ecosystem where is do you think in your opinion the level of awareness on this Perhaps the level of awareness there is it's there, but the level is not reached up to to a, a state to a, a situation where farmers are willing to to change to accommodate okay. the the need for the. I go to doctor yeah. now. You you've yeah. seen across the region, yeah. Vietnam mm. and, and even China. I think the changes or modification of changes has to come from several angles. Okay. One of course is policy to provide incentive for alternatives. Providing pesticide subsidy is counterproductive, mm-hmm. and the other one is communicating with farmers to motivate them mm-hmm. that there is a benefit yeah. for to, to for for doing this. Have you seen this successfully been done? Yes, for example, in Vietnam. Beginning to see in Vietnam, mm-hmm. one province called Tien Giang, okay. where I work very closely with the governor, mm-hmm. and he is actually reallocating his pesticide budget, okay. and some of the budget are beginning to go into flower growing in okay. some areas. And very impressed with the the three villages he has started, he was very impressed because mm-hmm. they they have completely stopped insecticide okay. spraying, mm-hmm. and uh, getting yields, very appreciable high yields. Doctor, you have to come again, because that's all yeah. the time we have. Yeah. I've a lot more things to talk to you, and I know for a fact that farmers down there, up there in Perlis and Kedah or even other places in Malaysia and across the region will will make best use of this knowledge. Thank you, Datuk, for coming. Terima kasih banyak kepada anda kerana telah menonton Suruh Pandang. Hantarkan pandangan anda seri per Suruh Pandang Astro.com.my dan uh, ataupun Facebook dan Twitter Awani dan Twitter dan Facebook saya sendiri dan uh, terus bersama Astro Awani 501 kerana Saudari Umaira telah pun bersedia dan tersenyum di sana untuk memberikan anda berita-berita terkini dunia hiburan dan sensasi dalam Gala TV. Sekian, selamat malam dan terima kasih. Thank you so much.